So as promised that I have some requests about this as well, I wanted to talk to you and give you some tips on how to tune big floor toms, in particular 16 inch and 18 inch toms. I'm also gonna talk about my other tom that I here, have here, a 13 inch tom. Um, but there's uh, some, a lot of uh, little tips and tidbits that I've learned over my career um, that I think are beneficial and should help you out with uh, if you're having some problems tuning them. Uh, you're probably thinking to yourself, why should I listen to this guy about drum tuning? Well, I am a certified drum tuning fanatic. I've uh, been playing drums for almost 50 years. I've had a very successful career in, in you know, playing in cover bands and original bands. I'm also a session player. I played, uh, did a lot of session work in my hometown area, as well as uh, in Nashville. Um, I've talked to a lot of professional drummers, picked their brains, um, guys like Gavin Harrison, Brian Tishy, Bobby Rondinelli, Anton Fig, just to name a few. Um, have a lot of information uh, that I've gotten from them over the years and have applied to my own drum set. So I think the information I'm gonna share with you is pretty valuable and um, I just wanna to get to that right now. So the first area I wanna talk about is a 16 inch floor tom and an 18 inch floor tom. If you have um, a 16 inch floor tom, you probably, if it's the biggest tom in your set, you probably have it tuned down pretty low. And if you add an 18 inch drum to that, you'll notice and probably the problem that you've you're noticing if you do have a 16 and 18 inch floor tom is they can sound very similar they kind of live in the same sonic neighborhood so you have to kind of adjust one or the other to make it so that you can hear the pitch differentiation between the two of them and there's really not much that you can do other than you're going to have to raise the pitch of the 16 inch a little bit more than maybe what you're accustomed to while keeping the 18 inch drum relatively low, but still have the, uh, the feel and the character of a drum without, without it sounding too floppy. So um, I just wanna show you what I do with mine and give you some examples and some recordings that I've done here. I'm gonna add some little snippets here in a little bit to show you what they sound like and just show you uh, what I've learned and some of the things that I do. So I think it's best to start with the biggest floor tom, the 18 inch floor tom, because that's as low as you're gonna go. And it just seems to work out better that way. And just to let you know, um, I tune my drums and the guys that I, that I talk with, 99% um, of them tune their drums by ear first. Um, I think that's very important. They don't rely on any gadgets or anything like that. They tune them by ear to get them to sound you know, good to their ear first. And then after that is when they kind of fine tune things and, and tweak it a little bit to make it a little bit more pleasing or a little bit more desirable. So um, that's what I'm gonna do first here is start with the 18 inch drum. So with the 18 inch drum and with all of the drums, 90% of the guys that I talk to have the bottom head of the drum a little bit tighter than the top head. And um, I'll tell you why here in a second. But with this particular drum, with the 18 inch floor tom, it's a big drum. So you can't tune it too low because it's gonna sound floppy and it's not gonna have the, uh, the right kind of a feel and it's just not gonna project. And that's a problem that a lot of drummers have, I think, is they're tuning their drums too low and there's, they're losing character and they're losing volume. They're losing the projection that the drum can have. So it has to have, a little bit of tension on it for it to sound good and sound pleasing. So with this particular drum, this drum um, by ear was tuned to pretty close to where uh, a G note. The reason that I know that is because once I get it in tune, one of the main things that everybody pretty much knows is you wanna make sure that each lug is the same pitch. So with this particular drum, it's tuned to a G on the top. That's pretty much where it was when I when I uh, first tuned it by ear, but when I fine tuned it, I found that it was really close to that. So that's what I made it at. So how do I do that? Well, there's different ways you can do it. You can do it through uh, a sound source, like a pitch pipe or a keyboard note. I use this Drum Tune Pro app. Like I said, I really tune by ear first and foremost, but to fine tune things and to find out where things are at um, for recording purposes and other things, um, I use this app called a Drum Tune Pro, which is right here. And when you open it, it has a lot of different features. Um, there's a tuning feature, which is right there, but it also has a frequency chart, which shows you what frequency that, uh, that the notes are 
and it also gives you a note. So that uses as a reference point. So this particular drum is tuned to a G, and the G that I use is in the second octave. I don't know if you can hear that. It's pretty close. So what I'll do is just go around to make sure that that particular drum is tuned to a G. So I'll tap on the lug. It's 99.5, so that's a little bit sharp. So I would just go down and make sure that that, tune that to it's a 98. Right there. And then I can target that, zero in on it. And then I go around and make sure that all the drums, the lugs are the same. And then once I do that, that particular head is tuned to a G note. That doesn't mean that when I play it, it's going to be a G, but that's what the, the, uh, the, the top head note is tuned to. So after that, then I'll turn the drum over and I like to go with my toms. I noticed that it just seems to sound the best, the, the most lively sound, the most projection, what's recorded best is when the bottom head is a little bit tighter. How much is a little bit? Well, it can either go from a half step to a minor third, which is three steps. I usually go a step or a minor third higher on the bottom head than I do on the top head. So this particular head is 109, which is almost an A. So a G, what the pop head was a G, the bottom one is an A, so that's about a full step. So I usually do about that, at least a full step, sometimes a minor third um, between the top and bottom head. That seems to give a really nice full tone. It cuts down a little bit on the resonance sustain, so the drum doesn't ring too long, but it still gives you a nice full tone. And from all the guys that I talked to over the years and the drummers that, whose brains I picked and things like that and things I've read about, um, they all pretty much do the same thing is just to, you know, have the, the bottom head a little bit tighter, usually half step, full step, minor third, major third, right around in that area seems to work really well. So with the 16 inch Tom, normally, like I was saying earlier, if you have it tuned super low and it's the, it's the lowest, biggest drum on your kid and it's the lowest Tom, a lot of guys, and I've sat in sometimes and played drummer, drummer's kits and their floor tom is tuned really, really, really low. And it works, you know, and to each his own and whatever, there is no right or wrong. But if you have an 18 inch drum along with your 16, you really probably have no choice but to raise it up a little bit in order to get enough pitch separation between the two. So um, what I do is I try to go to at least a third between the top, the two top heads. So if that 18 inch head was at a G, then the 16 inch head should be G sharp, A, A sharp, B. Should be at about a B. A third is four notes. So if I go in to my app, and if I found, saw that the G was 98, I go up to the B, which is 123.47. So let's go 123.5. And that's where my 16 inch floor tom should be tuned to. So if I go to the tuning setting, There it is, 123.5, it's perfect. So all those lugs are at 123.5, which will give me a B on the top, and that's a G. So that's a third between the top and bottom head. And with the same concept on the bottom head tuning of a full step or a minor third on the bottom, when you strike the actual drum, the fundamental frequency, the frequency that the drum is gonna give off, there should be a third between the, the, the 16 and the 18 inch tom, which is a pretty good pitch interval. Uh, thirds and fourths are common, but at least a third, if you go less than a third between the, the two big floor toms, it's really hard to distinguish the pitch. So a third is the lowest frequency separation that I would go, you would go a third or a fourth, but a third seems to work. And um, I'll show you what that sounds like now. So here's the 16. Here's the 
So remember, this drum was tuned to a B on top, so this is what it is when you're actually striking it. Which is a D sharp. And then this one is a B. So it's a third between the two, like I was telling you. So that's, those two drums, they sound good. They're not really resonating too long. and There's, there's not giving me any weird frequencies, everything. You know, the, the fact that all the lugs are tuned to the same pitch really makes a, a big difference in keeping the weird overtones and frequencies out of the drum. So when you play them, um, they sound good all by themselves. Lastly, this is a 13 by 9 inch tom. A lot of guys I've read um, in posts and things that they have trouble turning a 13 inch by 9 inch tom, which I don't really understand because a drum is a drum. You know, there's two there's two heads on the bottom and top of the cylinder, and it just it just it has an area where it sounds good, and that's where you find it at. So, with this drum as well, I tuned it by ear first, um, and then it was right around an E. So this particular top drum, the top tom, is tuned to an E, and the frequency of that would be 164.8. So I tuned it to 165 just to make sure that all the lugs are the same, and that's where that one's at. And then I actually went a minor third, three notes higher on the bottom on this drum to make it, uh, it just sounds a little bit more um, livelier, a little bit more powerful with a minor third on the bottom and, and the resonance is just perfect. And that's a fourth between the top head on this drum and the top head on the 16 inch tom is a fourth, five, five notes between the two. But because this one is a little bit higher on the bottom, a minor third as opposed to a full step on the bottom of this one, um, it's a little bit bigger than a major fourth interval. It's almost a fifth, um, but it just sounds good. Um, as you will see here, I think the toms sound pretty good in these little snippets I'm going to give you. But anyway, to wrap everything up, just make sure that all the lugs on the top and bottom of the, of the heads, they're all the same pitch. Um, I find it most beneficial to have the bottom head a little bit tighter, especially if your top head is a two ply and your bottom head is a one ply like these are. Um, but, tr you know, and then once, once you find where they sound good by ear, then try to find out what pitch the each head is and then maybe, you know, tune them to thirds or fourths to see if that makes it a little bit more of a pleasing interval. Um, and, and eliminate some of the dissonant frequencies and weird overtones that you may get if they're a little bit out of whack that way. Sometimes if you tune them into a, a, the, the notes like thirds and fourths and things like that, you eliminate some of those weird overtones and get nice full sounding drums that sound good as a whole too. So I hope that was beneficial. Um, check out these little snippets and I'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks.